Welcome, my friends, to a new episode of Tefl Insider. And in this episode, we're going to talk about Assignment 2 from TQUK, Tefl course at British Training Center. Right, now, let's, let's go and read a bit about Assignment 2 and see how we're supposed to be answering this assignment. Right, so uh, the title of the assignment is Understanding um, English Grammar. And if we go directly uh, to part one, okay, which is entitled Word Classes, right? Let's read the task. It says, for each of the following sentences, identify the word class, noun, verb, adjective, adverb, etc. Right? So that's, that's the first thing that is required from you to identify the word class. That's number one. And then, for the italicized word, then analyze the function of the word class in the sentence. So, it's about identifying the word class and analyzing the function of that word class in the sentence. Right, let me give you um, an example. Like when we say, he traveled immediately. Let's imagine that we want um, uh, to work with the word immediately. So we would say that this is an adverb, right? Now, what is the function of immediately in the sentence? He traveled immediately. Then we would say that it's an adverb that modifies the verb travel in the sentence. So this is what you're required to do. Now, in order to do that, we advise you to draw a table like this one. And in this table, you will have a section where you're going to write the word. And then next to the word, write class or category. And next to that, write function. So you put immediately under word. Then you write adverb under class category. And then in the function, you write an adverb that modifies, okay, uh, the verb traveled. And, and that's all what you need to do for part one and you do you do it with every sentence so you've got four sentences in part one uh, and you do that with each italicized word in every sentence right okay wonderful now let's go to part two and part two says tenses person and number okay and let's read the task together okay and it says in each of the following sentences identify the tense or structure so you underline this part and then person, first, second, third, and then number, singular, plural of the italicized verb. Interpret how these elements are indicated in the grammar of the sentence. So four things need to be covered the tense or structure of the verb. Person, is it first, second or third? And number, singular or plural? Okay, lovely, right. So let me give you an example of how we would answer this. What I advise you to do is to draw a table where you have a column for the verb and then a column for the structure or tense a column, okay, um, for the person and a column for uh, the number, right? Now, let's say um, a sentence like, we have done our homework. We have done our homework. Okay, right. So you go to have done, you write it under the verb column. And then you say that have done in terms of structure, it's present perfect. How is it indicated? You will say under present perfect, indicated by the use of have plus the past participle. 
and then you go to the second column, which is a person. And because we're saying we, so that's first person. First person, indicated by the use of have. And then you go to the third column. And in a third column, you have plural or singular. You say plural, indicated by the use also of have. So in every column, you talk about something and you talk about how it is indicated, how it is represented. Okay. And that's how you do with all the verbs given to you in this task. So it's just a table and that's what you do. Okay. Let's go to part three. And in part three, we have syntax, sentence types and clause coordination. Let's read the task together. It says, analyze the structure of each sentence by identifying the subject, verb, and object, if relevant. Analyze the structure of each sentence by identifying the subject, verb, and object, if relevant. Identify the sentence type declarative, interrogative, imperative, or exclamatory, and the method of clause coordination used, simple, compound, complex, or compound complex. Right, so three things. Number one, you analyze the sentence using SVO analysis, or subject verb object analysis. Number two, you mention the type of the sentence. Number three, you mention the type of coordination. Is it a simple sentence? Is it compound? Is it complex? Is it compound complex? Right, right, right. Okay. So let me give you an example and then we work with it. For example, has John arrived? In order to analyze this sentence, okay, as an answer, here in the assignment. You're going to divide your answer into three sections, A, B, and C, in order not to forget anything. So, in section A, you're going to draw a table. And in this table, you're going to have a column for every element of the sentence. So if your sentence is, has John arrived or has John seen the movie? So you're going to have a section for has, a section for John, a column for arrived or seen. And a column for the movie has Jean, has Jean seen the movie. And then, okay, you're going to say that has auxiliary verb. Okay, Jean subject, seen verb, the movie object. So this is part A. <coughs> you go to part B, you say that this is an interrogative sentence. You go to part C, you say, this is a simple sentence. And that's it. So this is what you need to do with every sentence in this task. Analyze it using SVO analysis first. And then you go to the second part and you talk about the kind of the sentence. And you go to the third part and then you say um, whether this um, um, a simple sentence, compound complex or compound complex. Okay. Let's go to part four now. And in part four, you get an English passage with punctuation marks, of course. Or what you need to do is to take the punctuation marks, okay, put them in a table like this one, put the mark here and write what it does, its function in English language. So you, for example, you put a quotation mark and then you mention next to it why we use a quotation mark and why it is used in this text. A question mark and why it is used in that text. Capitalization and why it is used. Someone might say, Shadi, but are we going to repeat things if they're repeated in the passage? No. If they, if they are repeated for the same purpose, then no, don't repeat your answer. But if they're repeated for different purposes, yes, repeat your answer. How? Like talking about capitalization. If you have a capitalized letter because it's at the very beginning of the sentence, 
then you write capitalization, you put the example and you say, we start um, new sentences with a capital letter. But what if you found I capitalized? Then you say that I is always capitalized in any uh, place um, in the passage. Doesn't have to be at the very beginning of the sentence. Uh, what if you have the word London with a capital letter and then you say uh, that proper nouns are capitalized? Okay, names of cities are capitalized, right? Okay, so, um, and then this is how you answer your assignment. So the assignment is made of four parts, okay? Well, the first part is actually uh, about word classes. The second part is about tenses, person and number. Uh, the third part is about syntax and sentence types and clause coordination. And finally, the last part is about punctuation. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen. It was great um, meeting you again. And see you, inshallah. Good luck with um, assignment two. Bye-bye.